welcome back to another Fusion Friday. And always, I'm still Fusion Phil with Next Gen Cam. And this week, we're going to be talking about Fanuc 68.Q filtered work planes, as well as Siemens Cycle 800 plane swiveling. We will also show you how to edit your post processor and shift your coordinate system in XYZ, making it much easier on your operator to see what needs to be edited, as well as why you would want to use 68.Q or Cycle 800 to make those changes at the machine much quicker. Let's go ahead and jump in it. But before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and run you guys through all of our events that we have coming up. I always get asked, when can I get a chance to meet Phil Brown? Well, that's easy. Just buy some on-site training and request me. I'll happily come out to your guys' facility, get you trained up inside of Fusion 360 and running at any time. However, if you don't really need training or you don't feel that flying me out specifically just to hang out with you guys, we do have the rest of the Next Gen team partaking in several events at our partnerships. That being said, we're starting with June 7th. We'll be actually at the HFO New York with NIMAT. Then turning around into June 13th, we're going to be in Denver with Productivity. Wrapping that up, June 15th, we're actually doing two different things. So we're going to be at the Milwaukee HFO as well doing a ProdSmart webinar online. Moving on to June 21st, we're going to be at Gossiker up in Michigan. And then lastly, currently on our schedule, out in September, we do plan on attending Gossiger Fest in Dayton, Ohio. So to find out more on any of these events, there's actually going to be a link down in the bio. Feel free to click it and check out the different things we offer. Let's get back into our software. Okay, so as you can see here, I already have my part programmed up. Um, just doing some simple roughing cycles on the outside, coming in and drilling the holes on the one end, and then going in and doing a little bit of milling and drilling on the other end. One thing to pay attention to here is my work coordinate system always stays set dead center, top of my stock. So this is good. However, in the event that I am doing something like this, I'm going to go ahead and post this actual tool path out. And for the purpose of this actual demonstration, I'm going to start with FANUC, and I'm going to use the Matsura post. But you're going to see the same thing across most of the FANUC posts at the end of the day. So let's look at this G-code. So we're going to come in automatically with a 68.2. We're not compensating anything in X, Y, Z. We are tilting, of course, our 90 degree motions as needed. But down below, you're going to notice that my Z height starts at 1.4287. Well, as an operator, if you're going to look at your actual coordinate system on your workpiece, you're going to notice it starts way up at 1.8 and drills down to 1.4. That could be a little confusing at the end of the day, as well as that location of where the hole is, isn't referencing our drawing or just doesn't look like good numbers to work off of. So let's go ahead and shift some things around. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by moving. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say, edit my tool path. And I'm gonna go to my tool orientation menu. And this is where I'm actually going to use a model box point for reference. So as you can see here, I could actually shift that to the model box. And in this case, I would probably use a location that's called out on my drawing. Again, down and over, maybe it's from center based on what's going on. But that's the very first step to being able to take full advantage of cycle 800 or G68.2. So as you see, I've went ahead and I've shifted that now. And with that being said, if I go back and post out using either post processor, again, it doesn't matter Siemens or FANUC, you're going to notice that it actually doesn't change anything in my G-code. And the reason why it doesn't change anything in my G-code is because I need to edit that post processor to allow it to compensate and actually fully shift that plane in XYZ. So let's go back and do that. So we're going to start by editing this FANUC post, and then we're going to come back and we're actually going to change the Siemens post after the fact. So I'm going to go in. And I'm going to post out again. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and edit this post processor. This is copied over to my local library. So I have the ability to edit it on the fly. But this edit's going to be very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this from another screen. And I'm going to paste it right in where I like to put it to be able to use it. So you're going to get the same code down at the bottom for the copy and paste. And I'm just going to add it right here after probe multiple values and paste it in. So we're going to map work origin equals false and then control S to save this. So now when I go back and I post using that actual Matsura post, what we're going to notice is we're actually going to get a shift 
X, Y, Z now on our 68.2 line. Again, as you can see, we do have 50,000 stock. So this was negative 0.055 before. It's now 500. Again, my y-axis, just because of the dimensions of where my parts lie and everything, are going to be a little screwy. But now that operator is going to see that we're only going 712 or 71,000 deep into my part. So again, just by actually moving the location of the actual tool orientation work coordinate, and then adding that one functionality to my FANUC post, I have now manipulated the system so that it does it automatically for me here at the control and when I post my G-code out. So let's go back and take a look at some other things, right? So why would you want to do this? Well, in the case of these three tool paths, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that again. So we're going to go ahead and go model box point, same exact point recycled again. And then this third tool path. Normally, I would be setting this personally, guys, when I created these tool paths originally. But in this case, I have to go back and edit what we already have. So if I take all three of my tool paths and I post them out, what you're going to notice is if I ever have to move that pocket, I only need to compensate my G68.2 once. I don't have to go through and try to compensate all this G-code or do anything crazy. Again, that's the luxury of a G68.2 or a Cycle 800. So what does those changes look like in the world of a Siemens? So again, I'm going to go ahead and post this out. I'm going to go into my file system. In this case, I'm going to use the Siemens 840D post. We're going to select that. And then I'm going to go in and edit. This is going to get a little crazy this time around because we're going to do the same change that we did before. So I'm going to go ahead and add in right here my actual map work origin. But then from there, I also need to go down to a section. And the easiest way to find this section is Control F. And then we're going to type in variable X0. So what we have here is integer format zero semicolon. What I actually need to do, and again, these are all posted down in the bio for everybody, is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in these three items that I need. So what you're going to see me do is I'm going to reuse the X. However, I'm going to go back and change that. One thing I did do here, cool tip for you guys, I put this in the variable A, B, and C. So if I wanted to, I could actually hit Control Z and undo that. So again, where I'm looking to do this is at the X0 line. We're going to go ahead and paste that variable in. Again, we're going to get rid of the integer, put that XYZ format line in. And again, now I'm just going to change the X out for Z. I'm going to change the Y out. And again, this needs to be lowercase. So if you're like me with cap locks turned on, we're going to go ahead and put in that lowercase letter. I need to pull that Z out for a lowercase. And again, Control S to save that Siemens. We go back to Fusion. We're going to go ahead and post this out. And what you're going to notice is in my Cycle 800 lines now, again, we're actually shifting at the cycle 800. So again, that 1.5, that one inch, that negative 0.05, things of that nature. Again, that negative 0.05 is because my stock to leave being dropped, but all three of these actual tool operations are controlled by this location. So again, a lot of times on a first op part, you're really not gonna have to shift a location of something. But if we're talking about op two, three, and four, this is where it really is handy to be able to move individual items as needed or actually call out the dimensions for the controller to see based on where your drawing calls them out so as always guys it's another fusion friday i hope this helps you out a ton when it gets down to being able to increase your process of the cycle 800s and the g68.2s like that go out have a great weekend get rested up for the monday morning to come